What the? The Packlids again? And now they're threatening Klingons? Hail the bird of prey. No response, Captain. Klingon ship, this is the Federation starship Cerritos. We've dealt with Packlids before. Are you in need of aid? Captain, both vessels are powering weapons. What? Shields up! Red alert! Beautiful day. Beautiful day. We're on our way to Malibu. We look like a couple. It's crazy. We do. This a thing? <laughs> it absolutely right. is a help. I think we're way past the polite stage in our relationship. <laughs> I'm not looking for romance from Doug. I'm not looking for surprises in our relationship. He's predictable in a way that uh, over 20 years I've, I've, I've built a, a model for him and I can tell you what he's going to say as we go forward and he can tell you what I'm going to do based on just uh, hearing the tone of my voice or uh, seeing the look on my face. So we're flying to Mars. How many people are going to be on the first transport to Mars? Maybe 50. 50? I mean, you want to have a good number, so at least a few of them will survive. You need a, a big crew to support that operation, and they're going to be completely by themselves. There's not going to be any yeah. support group. So you're going to need a lot of different capabilities, and you're going to need redundancy in those capabilities, and there's a strength in a group to handle yeah. a lot of issues, which you don't have when you have really tiny, tiny crew. And I would think we'll send at least two manned starships Apart from the cargo, which is extra at a different time, but at least like two starships so that one lands and then the second one so you don't... Oh, you said you sent ships that you know would, would land. Yeah. Not that there's a chance that they won't land, but they're fairly confident that they will land. Like, but like 25 people and 25 people. Didn't you say like starships can hang? Yeah, it's not a problem, but like on the first transport, you want to send a hundred people? Two starships carrying a total of 30 astronauts land on Mars. Ten additional cargo ships accompany them, carrying an oversupply of life support. These first astronaut settlers are scientists, engineers, medical specialists, and military personnel with scientific backgrounds. They all have to stay on Mars for the full two years and two months. This is not a short-term visit. It is a mission to make life sustainable and multi-planetary. During the first week on Mars, the astronauts are suffering from the effects of low gravity after the seven-month journey and have weaker muscles. The first week is used to acclimate to the gravity of the red planet and celebrate surviving the journey. The new settlers live in their starships that they landed in. The crew begins to adapt to their new surroundings. What's the bet? The bet is how many people? How many people? And when? And when? Okay. So Star two starships. You were very specific about that. So you said two starships going to Mars. After the cargo uh, ships. So we know they can send cargo in 26 right and 28 mm -hmm. and 30 right That's unless correct. we're talking about so the bet is about the number of people like you're, you're, you're i'm good odd. with 50 you said 50 i'm fine i mean so 50, so that 50 is legit and then but to have 50 people think about the the amount of i'm chow linger is raja chari kayla baron kate rubens i'm christina cook joe acaba Jessica Amir, Woody Hoberg, Anne McLean, Stephanie Wilson, Johnny Kim, Nicole Mann, Victor Glover, Jessica Watkins, Matthew Dominic, Jasmine Mogbelli, Frank Rubio, Scott Tingle. You just told me the story about that going to be astronaut, right? How many people? Like 9,000? Yeah, it's huge numbers. 9,000 into four? Yeah. And you're saying there's going to be 50 astronauts. That's I the bet. I think you're going to need a good group of 50. Highly professional, highly trained, lots of different capabilities. Also a good mixture from a psychological point of view, so everybody will have their own, you know, comfortable working. Do you think they'll have romance there or not a chance? Romance. A romance. Romance. I love. Love. love passion and beautiful. <laughs> I think they, they will have it. Yeah? I think it's going to be a great condition for romance and stress. They won't be married unless they will be, some of them will be married. Yeah, sure. All right, so if they're married, means they will probably not see their spouses for a few years. If 
ever. Maybe their spouses are our astronauts as well. They both met their wives in the NASA astronaut class of 2000. Benkin married Megan MacArthur. Hurley married Karen Nyberg. They're great guys. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Obviously, we think so. Yeah, we hit the jackpot. How many people are married and astronauts, both of them? Quite a lot, actually. Some of the, the couples that I do know in NASA, I would say a fair good percentage of them are two astronauts working together. Or not, sorry, not working together, but both of them are astronauts and they have completely different like schedules and things like that. Because they do understand the, the work. The work yeah. is very unique. In 2009, MacArthur's robotic skills helped prolong the life of the Hubble Space Telescope. She and Benkin have a six-year-old son, Theodore. We just try to talk to him as normally as possible about, you know, this is daddy's job, this is mommy's job, dad's going to go and, and launch on a rocket and go to space station, so that it's just kind of a normal thing for him to absorb. Nyberg, Hurley's wife, has spent 180 days in space, including two trips to the space station. My wife also does what I do for a living. It's much, much harder for me to BS her about certain aspects of the game, all right? <laughs> we have the same problem. Yeah. With what is that like to be married to other astronauts and launching into this new era of space exploration? The biggest thing is we know how they're going to feel on launch day. And it is way harder on them to watch somebody that you care for get on a rocket and go fly than it is for the two guys on the rocket. It's a tough, tough job to be the one watching. Yeah. Very unique. Very unique. Like you know, being in the army and you're, you're sent to this base and they're saying being sent to that base and this one is, you know, now being trained and being a pilot and then that one is being trained to be a submarine. It's completely different training schedules all over the place. So it's nice to have someone to come back home to that actually understands that. Doesn't give you a hard time for being away. It's not a bad idea to... Uh, send couples. Send couples. I would tell totally Not too much though because you're going to have... Because then it's like an opening for... Problems, oh, yeah. the of the group because, you know, yeah, they back. need to deal with each other for like seven, eight months in a starship, which is a small environment, and then they need to stay there for at least two years. If you have enough workload, then nobody has time to fight with anybody. Everybody's just you know, working all the time, all, all day long. Maybe one day is off, yeah, and, and that's it. And that goes on for two years, and they're sort of like trained to go into that home daily routines that you constantly do this and this and this and this and then you change some shifts so people will have some sort of a flexibility and diversity in what they need to do on the red planet and come back home. You have a few people who are couples they can rely on one another and it's a, from a psychological point of view it's very interesting but it does insert a bit of instability for the whole group maybe. Yeah suddenly you have a couple. Other people and then... don't have couples. Do you envy them? Do you, you know, how do you feel about that? Yeah. Because do they sort of because couples within a group it's like a group within a group isn't it and then i need to work with you but now we had a fight i don't want to work with you so 50 people go to mars fine so let's say 2030 okay so uh they're selected let's say 2035 just whatever okay, okay. so 2035 so they're selected like right at least five years before that so that's 2030 the whole procedure starts 2028 or 2027 five years from now we're imagining things okay so 2027 we're selected okay <laughs> it's important to do this five years from today right a group of 50 people are gonna be selected that may go to Mars later on. on I mean, Star they Wars. were selected to go to Mars. Yep. Their, their life as they know it end. But their life as they know it already end. It's usually professional astronauts who are selected for these long deep missions. It's not something new. But you have 50 astronauts. Let's say out of 50, mm -hmm. three are sick or three something happened and you need to replace them. So for 50 astronauts, you need backups. I don't know. Something happened. One got cancer. I don't know. Whatever. Things happen. So you select another 10 as backup. So you, backup. so you have 50 plus 10 for backup, whatever. Yeah. And they train with everybody else. And you know that at least 10, you know, like a few percentage will not be selected yeah. for Mars. Would you like to know that you're a backup? Or would you prefer just to? I mean, people know their backups. 
Maybe you choose the backup you know, at the end of the train. With Ilan Ramon, there was another astronaut. It's as, Mayo. That's right. He knew he's, he's a backup. Yeah, but that's a different mission. I just asked you a question. Would you prefer to know from the start that you are the backup astronaut, although you're training for Mars? Oh, okay. The answer is absolutely yes. If I can go, if, if I'm on the roster mm -hmm. as a backup to go to Mars, this Mars mission will be the first. The next mission I have already trained. I already have experience. Of course. You'll People be... already know me. Of course I will be train happy. as a backup. Okay. Absolutely. If you give me a choice right now whether mm -hmm. to go to Mars or not, so nice. I absolutely go to Mars. Me too! Hands up! Mars! Hey. There you go. Like, go to Mars or not? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No question.